everyone, and welcome to the three things you need to know about digital marketing. I am Gabrielle Luma, CPA, CGMA, and CEO of Mod Ventures. I will be facilitating and joining in this discussion with Mark Young, the CEO and founder of My Creative Inc., a digital marketing agency located in Phoenix, Arizona. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Mod Ventures. Mod Ventures is an outsourced accounting and advisory company for businesses across the United States. Our accounting team is entirely virtual and it has been since 2014. Our passion is to help entrepreneurs organize, create, and predict their financial futures. We believe that strong small businesses create financially stable communities, and that's very important to us. Hi, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm so excited about um, having this conversation about digital marketing. You are like the guru that I go to when we're talking about video. Um, and so I just really want to um, you know, give you a moment to introduce yourself the way you would introduce yourself. Um, so tell us, tell us all about you, Mark. You know, give us all the 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 secrets. Thank you, Gabby. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, yeah. So a little bit about me. I have a, a previous career. I had 26 years of radio broadcasting mm -hmm. and uh, over a decade of social media management and experience and building brands. And then about four years ago, me and my my team jumped away and, and we started My Creative Inc. So we're a, a creative marketing agency and we focus a lot on video content creation. And once you create good content and you're able to place that content you know, effectively, you can exponentially kind of grow your business or your brand right. and you can do it cost effectively, which is the beauty of digital. That's what I yeah. love. Yeah. So you broke away from radio. Yes. You totally have that radio voice. <laughs> I love your voice. It's like so smooth. So I can definitely hear that in, in your voice. So that's exciting. 26 years in radio. Wow. So what did you learn from 26 years in radio that you really brought into my creative ink? Great question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. There, there's a, a rule of radio, and it, it has to do with how we work, our, run our business. But you get one chance to do it right. Mm. And back in the day of radio, before computers and and a lot of recording, we had to crack the mic live, and you had a certain amount of time ramping a song, and so you had to know the beginning and the middle and the end in a really brief amount of time on what you, how to, how you wanted to tell a story or engage a listener. And so bringing that out into video content creation and digital marketing allows us to be able to create really short pieces, but that are effective and engaging right. and an emotion or make a connection. And that's what I love about being able to expose brands and give them like best tips and practices on how to kind of connect the dots a little bit better. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I love that. Well, you're right, because the attention span of your viewers are literally so short. So, you know, like TikToks and um, Reels and all these different things, like, that's like the modern day video, right? You, you know, it's not as produced and things like that. It's very, very quick, but you have to be able to catch that attention very quick or they'll swipe and then yep. you never get to talk to them. So, um, or, you know, they don't get to learn about you. They're just like, okay, she's boring. I'm over it. You know, I'm on to the next thing. So people can sniff and they, you know, we call it the sniff test. And if you're presenting something artificial or too polished, like too much shine, then why am I, why do I watch it? I don't need to be artificially marketed to. I get that noise all day long from all sorts of sources. Yeah. So we like to do, and, and kind of the rule of thumb is about three seconds to catch someone's attention. So you have the first three seconds to try to get me mm -hmm. before I swipe. Yeah. And, but that comes into kind of our, like our three, the three kind of rules that we work with when working with brands on not just video content, but also general marketing. Mm -hmm. And, and nowadays it's more and more important to be authentic. Yeah. So yeah, authenticity is so important. You got to show who you really are. You have to be uh, you know, self-deprecating or be willing to pull the curtain back and show that you're flawed and you're human. Yeah, yeah. And it's the quickest way to build rapport. Yeah, I get that. I think that's so from the, you know, real reality type TV, that's really kind of filtered into, you know, the normal day videoing and, and just kind of keeping up with who you are. So um, authenticity so important to show who yeah. you really are and for people to connect with you and for the right people to connect with you, um, you know, when you're attracting your ideal client. So, so yeah. tell me, things. Oh, go ahead, please. 
Yeah, no, go ahead. Cause you're, you were going to play off of what I said, which was your ideal client, right? Well, if it, what it does when you're, when you're authentic and that's yeah. kind of, that kind of explains the, like the abundance and the, and the, the exposure of like TikTok, the new, the newer platforms. Yeah. Is yeah. TikTok actually in their, in their established, the pillars of the brand is one of their the per, first pillars is what they call realness. So it's being authentic. And that's why when you look at Instagram, which is more of a FOMO, Kardashian type, here's what I ate, or here's me in my best dress versus TikTok, which is this real thing, or my dog just fell down the stairs and it's hilarious. That's that realness factor and why TikTok is accelerating so fast in growth and, and really sticky and why all these other brands, YouTube shorts and Instagram reels are all playing catch up to YouTube because yeah. they found that essence of just be real, just present who you are and people will kind of bond to you a lot quicker. Right. Yeah. So you did mention the differences of the different platforms. Um, give us an idea of what you would use those different platforms for. Maybe if you have different types of audience or different types of um, goals with your marketing. That's yes. Great. Um, so first of all, kind of getting the landscape of, of social media. Yeah. So most everybody thinks the biggest platform. Whenever we, we, we speak with people, they raise their hands and they're all Facebook. Well, mm -hmm. YouTube has been the industry leader and YouTube still is by about 74% of all users online on social media use YouTube. Wow. So it's, it's your daddy. And so yeah. if you're going to pour money somewhere or interest or, or your time and energy, go where the fish are, right? YouTube comes in number two, Instagram is tight number three, and TikTok is already number four as of January this year. And the one difference in this and how they kind of present their percentages or all these factors is, is TikTok. Um, they only show 18 plus numbers. So TikTok is actually between Facebook and Instagram already. Wow. So you got these big primary platforms for social media, but how does that interact with you and your brand? I, you know, do I need to be on TikTok if I'm an accounting firm? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Is it in your brand essence? It might not, but are you on LinkedIn, which mm -hmm. is you know, a magnificent platform for B2B? Right. And what most people use LinkedIn, what we used to use MySpace or Facebook for is when you, you might meet somebody and you're interested in them. So you're going to go and do your little search about them and you would go on social media and look them up. Well, for business, that's what we coach is uh, you should have a LinkedIn. You should have it up to date because people vet you through that platform. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and a lot of employers do the same thing, right? They're really trying to check out you know, who you are. And they're not just looking at LinkedIn, they're looking at all your platforms. So, you know, be super careful. Like, isn't that funny? Like we have to have those conversations now, like you need to be careful what you say online because anybody can see it. And we tell our kids that, but we, as adults have forgotten, <laughs> we have oh, probably uh, 15 years of digital, you know, conversations. Oh, <laughs> And, and the trackability, think of the things we all did when we were in college. Oh, that, man. Thank goodness there weren't phones to capture that or social media platform to have it posted for all eternity. So, no. yeah, different. yeah. So, yeah, having those conversations, I'm, you know, super grateful. Um, my daughter, my oldest is 27. And so she was never, you know, one to post a lot of crazy things online. So I never really had to have that conversation. She tends to be a little more private, even though she is a YouTube star, she doesn't, you know, post a lot of different things. In fact, she doesn't post her daughter's picture um, online at all. And it's very much for that security purpose. Like she's really trying to protect her daughter. So these are things that I wouldn't even thought about. Like I posted pictures of my kids when I was younger, but I now see, you know, there's lots of reasons to, to, for that privacy as well. So yeah, and it, yeah it's kind of crazy how things have changed over the years. So and, yeah. And the evolution is so fast. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so everyone's talking about AI. Mm -hmm. What do you think of AI and social media in general? Like, what are your thoughts around that? I think it's fascinating. Yes. You do a lot of experimentation with AI. You can modify graphics and images, obviously video is already at this point. Um, we do, we've dabbled a lot in uh, our uh, AI voiceover work. Oh. So for narration, you can mm -hmm. want somebody that sounds like Arnold Schwarzenegger. All right, I can get that created for you. <laughs> and it's advancing really, really fast. It doesn't sound, it's not ready to go yet from our, our experience at this point, because coming again from audio where we've 
we specialize in inflection and, and that storytelling and where I breathe and pause is important. And AI has can't quite pick up on that quite yet. Mm -hmm. You have to be really surgical in how you instruct it. And it's much easier for us to go and find, you know, a good talent that can understand and comprehend. Right. So emotion and stuff like that is still new, but I think it's going to be, it, it's a fascinating tool to not replace, but to assist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think that's a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the creative professions and I'll even throw CPAs in into more of a creative profession because there's definitely analytics and there's black and white, but there's a lot of creativity that goes in with that. But I think we're really looking at the next few years of, you know, creators having to learn how to use the tools in order to be more effective at what they do. Um, and we have so many things that we're trying to manage as business owners. It's just another way that we can, you know, it's like another assistant to help us. Yeah. So there's fascinating ways to tell AI to analyze your social media posts mm -hmm. and what works and what doesn't work. You can do it to create content, but think of it the way that we're kind of thinking about it with our team is think of it like a personal assistant. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. um, that's not quite to your expertise level, but I want you to go write copy for me and then bring that to me and let me filter it and put, put it in my voice. Mm -hmm. you know, you find it. And it'll get to a point where it's creating stuff, but then you're going to have to think of what's the next way that we're going to cut through that noise. Mm -hmm. And that's where that yeah. authenticity still has to come back into play. Yeah, exactly. Again, because robots are not real. <laughs> I mean, they're real. They exist. Like they're the real thing, but they're, they don't have that human component. Connection. Yeah. Yeah. Which so many people are really dying for um, yeah. these days. They just really, as the wor world has become more virtual, that, connection has become more of a need right a drive we need that yes. as people so really really yeah. so. that actually gets us to our second thing so we, we're on like making sure that you're authentic but then you want to make sure that you're inclusive oh. because the one cool thing about social media is you can create where, where tv and radio had this one-way street like i'm talking to you i'm playing you a song or i'm telling you about a contest social media allows a two-way conversation and there's a lot of value to that so when someone replies to you on your social channels or reaches out to you, we, by simply validating them or acknowledging that they're there, goes miles. It goes so much further in building a relationship and a rapport. Mm -hmm. And so that's another one of our big pillars that we tell clients and you know, you know, potential brands that are building is make sure that when you present something and someone gives you a response, whether it's positive or negative, you acknowledge it. And sometimes it's a hard pill to swallow if someone doesn't like what you what you shared, but. <laughs> Half, half the time, if you just acknowledge that they're there, they'll be diffused. Mm -hmm. and you can actually win someone over that might've been kind of trolling your page. Right, right. Um, yeah, I I don't have a lot of that happening to me. Yeah. <laughs> I will because I don't have that much reach yet. But um, I know that that is definitely something that a lot of um, folks that are, are content creators or who are putting information out there, business owners, things like that. Like, I mean, you think about the major brands, like I think probably the worst one is probably the airlines, right? Now right. They, <laughs> you'll have people sitting in the airport, you know, and let's say they, you know, they pick, pick any airline. You can literally talk smack about the airline experience at that moment and somebody on the social media team is going to respond. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting how you can get the attention of even these large, large companies by like talking about something that's important to you. So that's a negative context, but there's a probably a ton of positive context as well, where people are complimenting, showing gratitude and appreciation towards your brand. And then you can share that love. Um, back. So I think, you know, um, depends on how you use it, of course, but your customers. Your well, customers. we have, we have a, an attorney client and, you know, she's built her practice, blood, sweat, and tears, and she's really built it up. And you kind of go by the 80, 20 rule. Most every, everything you have, you're right. never going to satisfy everyone all the time. So 20% of your audience is going to have it be upset with you. Right. And she has, she has, feedback all the time and five-star reviews, but she'll get a one-star review of somebody that's, that's upset. And she takes it really personally. She takes that as a hit right. and trying to pull her back and remind her that, you know what, you're never going to satisfy everyone all the time, but make sure you reply. 
I'm sorry you were upset by this experience. And we see that then immediately someone will reply back, I'm sorry, I was having a bad day. Right. You really weren't that bad. And then she, then, you know, you're kind of leveling that playing field, but you're right. being inclusive by sharing. Right. Right. It's, yeah. It's a cool way to kind of get some more results from your investment without spending any more. Right. You know? Right. When you said inclusivity, I was thinking, um, um, about this, uh, conference that I just went to and they had a demographic analyst on and he was fantastic you know for somebody who's just talking about statistics all day long um he was amazing he was really really entertaining but he talked about how because our our population is changing um that it's he said it was browning and graying and so it was one of the tidbits I I got from his presentation was that our marketing materials needs to be inclusive of all different types of um, peoples and so diversity. And so, which is a little, you know, it's inclusion and then you have diversity, but the diversity part of your marketing also, which I didn't even think about, you know, um, putting up people that don't, that they don't necessarily look exactly like me. Right. But you'll be serving a wide range of audience. So, you know, really making sure that you're, authentically doing it well, you know, working through um, attracting the right client, but also remembering that there's a lot of different um, subsets of people out there. I, I just thought that was an interesting thing um, when you're really looking at your demographics and stuff. Yeah. We're delicate with that only because you want to still make sure that it fits your brand. Are you still authentic? Right. If you're doing it for the sake of doing it. Now you violated off you violated the expectation, right? Yeah. And I can see that there's such a fine line for that, right? Yeah. There's yeah. got to be a really fine line. Um, so I I think that's an interesting um area that a lot of companies are I'm sure are thinking about as they're they're doing their marketing and and you know, next steps. They they're either really aware of it or they're not aware at all. Yeah, so. exactly. And sometimes <laughs> like, well, we have to make sure we have this, 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 and this. And you're like, do you really need to have that? Or is yeah. it are you trying just to com- conform? And you're like, why are you doing it? Is it what your brand represents? And that's where, when you get to being, it always, we love just simplicity. And so when it's just, is it authentic to your brand? Cool. Then let's make sure we address it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Great. Yeah. So, we talked then, about inclusivity mm-hmm. and I know that there was another item that you were. You the wanted- third. Yeah. The third, the third one. Yeah. <laughs> The two, the third one. <laughs> the third one is uh, consistency. Okay, consistency. Yeah. Well, anything in business, right? Anything that you're consistent at, usually you're going to do pretty well. But so tell us about that. Yeah, just making sure a lot of folks will jump onto like, oh, I started my TikTok and I posted one last April. Yeah. And I'm not getting any results on it. And you're like, I know, but you have to keep pedaling the bicycle. And you don't have to pedal, you know, five times a week and keep going hardcore, but you have to pedal. So build yourself a little bit of consistent schedule that you're comfortable with. Right. And that goes with, and we, we love even with internally with us is our LinkedIn account on making sure, is there something that's resonating with us that can provide value back to the audience? Mm-hmm. We make sure we post it, but let's go ahead and be on the, the lookout for it. And there might be more stuff that happens one week and less stuff happens another week or another month, but you're consistent. So then people know that you're breathing and that your brand is still alive and that you're kind of just showing, again, that authenticity, but being transparent. Right, right. Well, I think the funny thing about consistency is that um, people think that it needs to be every day or they they right. feel like, That's you know, first yeah. So when you're saying it needs to be consistent, does that mean to be, you know, you have to do it every single day? And I, I think that that's a myth. Like it, it really needs to be probably minimum once a week. That's, that's the way I would see it. Um, what are your thoughts on posting? Well, we have certain clients um, that like live events where during the event, we're posting three or four times a day. Right. After the event, we still post, we, we slow down the cycle mm-hmm. and make it you know, what, but because it still has to be relevant, you don't post for the sake of posting. Right. You know, we we challenge a lot when we ask clients like, is there meat on the bone? Like yeah. to do it is to throw bones out, just to do it. But if there's meat on the bone, there's value to me as your audience. Mm-hmm. Then okay, cool. So can you can you have meat on the bone once a week or twice a week? Okay, cool. And does that not 
burden your bandwidth or your own works, you know, because it's not mm-hmm. worth it if you're going to be exhausted and bitter about it. So right. how do we make it fun and less of a stress and still be consistent? And you'll find rewards because once consistency hits after three or four months, you'll find audience coming to you. It's really, it, it's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the neat things that we had um, happen to us um, on Instagram. It's funny because, you know, there's not a lot of CPAs on Instagram, but you know, we were putting out really consistent um, content, especially during the pandemic time about all the different things that were happening. And so, you know, we had people who were coming to us that were like, you're telling us more than our current even CPA relationship is telling us. So, and this is just like tidbits of information on Instagram. It wasn't like, you know, I'm not sending them books or anything like that. It was just like, you know, Hey, make sure you think about this and you know, all those things. So I think that that's the way, you know, um, you represent yourself. Like I'm going to consistently provide valuable information over this period of time. You're going to gain trust because you see that I'm consistent over time. And you know that you're just getting this tidbit of information, but when you become a client, you're kind of opened up to this whole world of opportunity and working with us. And I think that that's really what we, I mean, especially I would say professional services um, opportunity is, is that you're giving them a small window of what it looks like to work with you Um, and showing that showing up consistent, consistently, um, you know, you're giving an opportunity for somebody to see you or different people to see you and attract different types of people over that time period. Well, so that's, yeah, the best part of consistency, it builds legacy. Mm-hmm. And I that's it. builds legacy. And if you're thinking of how to outsmart Google and get on search engines and SEO and all that stuff, it is all about legacy. And yeah. building legacy is just about being consistent at what you having a footprint in the digital sphere and wh- whatever channels you choose that match your brand and your essence and you're consistent there, you then become an expert and an authority and you have legacy and then people will flock to you. I mean, it's just natural. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's a, that's um, our human nature, right? We want to kind of test something before we actually dive right in. And these days you can. And so I think that's a a really great way for people to build their brand and build their clients um, with social uh, media and, and using that. So video, YouTube, all of that, I'm glad to hear that it's like still massive. Yeah. If you think YouTube actually for millennials Mm. uh, is the number one search engine. Yeah. And strangely enough now with Gen Z, TikTok is the number one search engine. Wow. Gen Z going on to TikTok and searching recipe for whatever, or how do I fix my flat tire? And YouTube is that for millennials. Wow. So in Gen X, we're still archaic. And hanging out, you know, on Google and finding stuff out. But that's that's how these platforms are now being utilized. And so when you deliver content the way someone anticipates to use that platform, yeah, then you're saving yourself time, energy, and money. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, what about podcasting? What are your thoughts on that? Because that's like the new modern radio to me. It feels like the, you know, we're kind of going back to was it the 40s and 50s where we would have radio shows? Radio shows, yep. But now it's podcasting, but it's the same thing. So what are your, yeah, what are your thoughts on podcasting? Podcasting is good. I I like it. I like it for clients that, again, are willing to commit to be consistent though. Mm -hmm. So there's two forms of podcast. There's the short, like a limited series. Right. Or there's then consistent, like I'm here as your expert and I'm going to keep dropping nuggets of knowledge. So build a calendar that you can facilitate and manage. And podcasting isn't doesn't need to be a weekly thing. It doesn't need to be that tight and fast of a thing. But but if you're doing a monthly podcast, which is you know pretty easy to do, take two yeah. months off, create 10 episodes a year and, and deliver a product, then you can have a lot of value in it. It's not the uh, quick fix to get it accelerate and you're going to suddenly have tens of thousands of viewers right. by just throwing it up on a, pod, on a platform. Right. You really have to work at it. Because yeah. everyone is fl- flushing with podcasts, but consistency is what kind of you can really call the herd really fast by, you know, Joe Bob's Barbecue just put up a, a podcast, you know, two years ago and never did another one. Yeah. Then I'm, I, you know, I might like that one episode, but to bring me to your brand, keep providing me value, like show me who you are and what you do. Yeah. 
Well, I love that. I think the same thing is true of um, YouTube in that, you know, you don't have to be on there every single week or every, even every month, you can do series, you can do a lot of different things. Um, we are going to be posting, I think this is our 15th or 16th video this year. Um, and so it's exciting for me. We've taken a little bit of time off during the summer and kind of jumping back into it, you know, but we were consistently every other week doing it. Um, so I think there's definitely an opportunity to do that, but the every week, I think you get more traction if you, you do do it more often. So, um, you know, there's one thing that this is like the oldest thing about digital marketing. If we still have a couple of minutes because yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, the old rule when people, and this is kind of stuff that people still regurgitate up is that I don't want to post too much because I'm going to burn out my fans. Yeah. So you get that argument all the time. Meta from day one had a thing called an edge ranker. And so what it is, is depending on how good the content is, it's like a coffee filter or a funnel to me, is if you're providing amazingly stellar content, let's say back in the day, if you did a word post or a photo post or a video post, a, 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 a photo post might only go to 20% of your followers. So it doesn't go, to, you have a thousand followers. It doesn't go to all 1000. Uh, mm -hmm. Meta actually filters how many people see it. Now, based on how people, how many people like, comment, or share the engagement rate, they'll actually start pushing that and widening the edge rankers. So this is why people keep, well, people, a lot of people wonder why we do video and why is video so important? Well, video is the highest engaging media yeah. over yeah. standard photos or, or text. Right. And so here, all of a sudden I'm pushing my edge ranker as wide as I can for 30%. And then if it's a good engaging video, then it goes wider. And then Facebook starts trusting my brand. And yeah. So this is why consistency is key because consistency, even if you have a bad, a bad episode or a bad post once in a while, that's fine. But you keep widening that. So then your filter gets wider and wider. The funnel gets wider and wider. That more audience naturally is being delivered your content. That's awesome. That's very cool. I didn't know that the, that, that happened. Had no yeah. idea. It's the most, it's so fun. It's crazy when you see people's eyes open and they're like, oh, I'm like, do you get 30 posts from this client that's doing 30 posts a day? And they're like, no. And they're like, that's why. Mm. So, because these platforms, their entire purpose in existence is to keep you on the platform. So you right. think about it, their purpose is selfish. So what they do is they'll find, this is why a Kardashian can become famous because something that they post is so, so viral and so exciting that they're going to want to post that to everybody on the platform. But if I post something that's disengaging or anti my brand or, you know, doesn't resonate, right. they're going to minimize that audience. And you as a channel, they're going to minimize your channel because they're like, yeah, this person isn't really giving this stuff to keep people on our platform. Right. Let's give it to the people that are peddling consistently and finding. And the more consistent you are, and you know this too, Gabby, I'm sure by all the, the content that you post, you yeah. learn what to rinse and repeat and you learn what to not repeat. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's how you become good at it. Right. Right. Exactly. Well, yeah, I think it, it, it helps. I wish I haven't done as much analysis on what people really, really like. <laughs> well, let me know. We'll, we'll yeah, take it yeah, we could play with that. <laughs> Sounds like a fun project. <laughs> <laughs> Love analytics. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think as we're wrapping this up, what is the, like the biggest golden nugget you want people to know about, you know, their branding, social media, video production, like what is the, the thing? Yeah. You know, the, the old days of marketing, mm -hmm. traditional marketing, an agency would come to you and you'd be, you'd give them some information. They come back and they're like, and you see this in like Mad Men or, you know, where they're like, yeah. oh, here's the billboard. And this yeah. is where we're going to spend all your money on this billboard and this TV commercial. Good luck. Right. They're the experts. What digital is so fascinating be and with social media, because we can, it's all measurable mm -hmm. and you can A, B test. You can test multiple versions of something. And we've gone over this example over example with clients where they're like, I love red. It's all got to be the color red. And yeah. I'm, like, I'm going to run red, blue, and yellow. And they're like, go ahead. You know, it's not costing me anything. Let's just do it. And it comes back that yellow is going to get you twice the return. So we go to client and go, I'll pay, I'll do red because you want red, but you tell me, would you like more money or would you like to be, you know, do you like the vanity? You tell me. Mm -hmm. And so digital the, is awesome because you can experiment and try and test and then pull that out and put it into paid marketing and right. put it into your other campaigns or television or, or wherever you want to go. And so the ability for a small business owner or a brand to, to be able to dissect some info, 
get feedback from your own core audience and immediately take action on that is so fascinating to me because we can be so responsive nowadays where before you would set it and forget it and hope hope that it connected. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very, very valuable information because I mean, you're wasting a lot of money. And these days, you know, with tight budgets and things like that, you don't, you can't, it's just, you know, you don't have, you know, several thousand dollars just laying around waiting to be used, you know? So. And to me, it's fascinating to know what my audience loves. Right. What part of what we deliver and the services that we provide are, are good. And what part are, you know, can we cut away and save, save our own bandwidth or our own staffing and, and like sure. it's just a way to be smarter, not harder. Yeah. I love that. Well, I'm a big fan of working smarter, not harder. So <laughs> thank yeah. you so much for bringing that final golden nugget to this conversation. Um, so thank you so much, Mark. I really appreciate um, just everything you're about. You're amazing. Um, love working with you and, um, you know, building we're in a, a CEO, just for the audience sake, we're in a CEO round table. So we get to see each other at least, you know, once a month and talk about our businesses. So it's, it's amazing when, so when I say building together, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that as well. So um, Mark and I have, have some background anyway. Um, so thank you so much, Mark, really, really enjoyed having you today. And um, can you let our audience know how you can be reached? Yeah, you can reach us straight through our, our website at mycreativeinc.com. Okay, great. Easiest, yeah. way. easiest way, right? Direct to you. Yeah, you can check out our archaic social media channels because we focus all our energy on our clients. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yeah. So we are just like everybody else, we refocus and we pit, you know, we, we get everything kind of kickstarted again and get get everything realigned. So don't think that just because you know, you, you, like you said, over the summer, you take a break, you got to take a break. Yeah. And then you come back to the, you come back and start, start the grind again and make it something that you can do consistently and measurably. Right. Right. Awesome. Thank you. All Gabby. right. All right. So um, if you're interested in this type of content, make sure that you like and subscribe to this channel and um, we'll see you all next time. Mm -hmm.